November bass fishing can be really, really good. It's nice to have less pressure on the lakes, but depending on the part of the country you're in, there is a wide range of temperature differences. And the first thing to know is if you're in some of the more southern waters, is that a lot of the lures I talked about in October are still gonna work really well. That's gonna be your square bill crankbaits, your jerk baits, spinner baits, top waters, these types of things. And I'm gonna put the link down below for that particular video so you can kind of get a range from that October to November bass fishing depending on your water temps. Well, let's get to it for my favorite four lures for November bass fishing. Number one is going to be a finesse jig. I know some of you that may, you may be surprised about that, thought I was gonna still talk about the bait fish, and I will in just a second, but it's important to know that crawdads, these crayfish that are in our waters, still have a large percentage of bass that are feeding on them very heavily. If you've got your bass that like to key in on bait fish, then you have bass that like to key in on those crawdads. So it's important to have an offering in November that can satisfy that bottom feeding presentation. And the finesse jig is definitely it for me. As a matter of fact, a lot of people didn't even realize that a crayfish will have a second breed Breeding season. We always focus on the crawdads in the spring, but we can't forget about them in the fall as well. And a finesse jig just fits the bill. Number two is going to be a finesse swim bait. I really like the two and three quarters inch swim baits. Okay, this particular one is the Rage Swimmer, but the, the smaller size just fits what the bass are seeing right now so well. Take a look at this footage that I got here just the other day. There is just a ton of the young of the year panfish in this frame and they are so tiny. They're all over the place. And you can see where a traditional swim bait, you know, those three and three quarters, four inch, even up to a five inch, is gonna be a lot bigger than what the bass are seeing right now. And, and the reason I say what they're seeing is because these young of the year bait fish really school up together tightly and so they're easy to pick out for the predators and if you've got an offering out there that matches that size it's just something that they are used to seeing and going to key in on now depending on your fishery once again that color choice can vary here I like to have some of those natural panfish type colors those bluegill type colors but your whites and your silvers and your grays those are always good options because they mimic minnows, uh, alewives, threadfin shad, all of that type of stuff. So a small swim bait is a really, really good choice. And if you've got bass that are still offshore, they're still deeper in that water column, this is one of those lures that can get down there to those fish and just mimic what they're feeding on. Number three is an underspin for a lot of the same reasons that I talked about that small swim bait. An underspin with that little blade on there just imitates the bait fish, the right size of the bait fish, and it stands out. I like to have that little bit of thump, that little bit of flash on there. If you've ever witnessed schools of bait, okay, in the bright sunshine as they're flicking around the surface or as they're moving through the water column, they bounce back the rays of the sun and they've got that little bit of a flash to them. Well, an underspin just imitates that so well. It's not an overpowering blade, okay, like with a bigger spinner bait. It's a very subtle, very finesse type of a presentation. And once again, you can hit multiple parts of the water column with it. And the next one you just have to have tied on this time of year is a lipless crankbait. This is, once again, it's, it's going to match the size. I told you I was going to talk about those bait fish, but it can cover all parts of the water column efficiently. It will drop through the water column quickly. That fluttering action of a lipless crankbait on its way down is just a powerful way to attract bass in the area. And don't forget when you're retrieving a lipless crankbait, it's more than just your standard chunk and wind retrieve. This is a lure that does an excellent job of hopping it back to you. Try to get as many hops as possible so when that lure settles down to the bottom, go ahead and snap it off the bottom. Try to get that reaction bite and then let it flutter back down. I will try to do 
many, many one or two foot hops as opposed to fewer three or four foot hops, if that makes sense. And hey, if you wanna watch that video about the October lures, if you're in the southern part of the country and you feel your water temps are very different than up here in the north, go ahead and check this one out right here and make sure that you go out and encourage someone today. You never know how you might just change their life. For The Bass Fishing Life, I'm your host, Steve Rogers.